What if I was to tell you that in order to be happy, you can't try to be happy? That the more you pursue happiness, the more likely you are to be unhappy? Sounds a bit nuts, right? I mean, it completely goes against common sense. Let me try to explain. I recently found a video on the internet by a YouTuber called Matt Devella, who talked about Alan Watts' backwards law and its implications to happiness. Now, in case you don't know who Alan Watts is, he's that f***ing old dude who has the awesome voice who's always narrating motivational videos. You know, the ones that want to make you quit your job, get down, bang out a thousand push-ups, buy a ticket to Oz to pursue your dream job of being a dolphin trainer. So then, when you're in the way of waking up and finding out who you really are, what you do is what the whole universe is doing at the place you call here and now. There are kind of two reasons I wanted to make this video. Firstly, because I love photography and cinematography, so I kind of wanted to set myself a little video challenge. And secondly, I love the topics of self-development and psychology. I read so many self-help books, and the reason I chose this topic in, in particular is because I feel in the last couple of months I've been in a bit of a slump, mainly with my tennis. And when I read about the Backwards Law and watched Matt's video, it really was like a light bulb moment in my mind, so that's why I wanted to use this as my topic for the video. So what is the backwards law and how can it be applied to happiness? His law basically says that the more you chase something, the more unsatisfied you will become with the result. In a quote from his book The Wisdom of Insecurity, he says, when you try to stay on the surface of water, you sink, and when you try to sink, you float. And this same thinking can be applied to anything. The more you crave to be rich, the poorer and more undeserving you feel, regardless of your actual bank balance. The more you want to be slim and sexy, the more you realise that you're not, and you come to see yourself as ugly, regardless of your actual appearance. And it's the exact same with happiness. The more you want to be happy and feel better all the time, the less satisfied and happy you will become. Why? Because pursuing something only reinforces the fact that you don't have it in the first place. The more I chase that ranking goal by the end of the year, the more I'll realise that's a long way away. Mark Manson, the author of The Subtle Art of Not Giving a f wrote something that so eloquently sums up this paradox. He wrote, Wanting a positive experience is a negative experience whereas accepting a negative experience is actually a positive experience. The thing is, in our advancing materialistic society, where we're flooded by fake lives on Instagram where everyone seems to be chasing perfection, girls are chasing those Barbie doll waistlines and Kylie Jenner lips, and guys are chasing status through fast cars and smoking hot chicks on their arms. And what's the end result? We're conditioning ourselves to believe that happiness is a destination. We tell ourselves, I'll only be happy when I attain my goal, I'll only be happy when I win my next tournament, get a promotion, or get that J-Lo ass. We're always spending our time in the mindset of not having, which is a load of crap when it comes to our happiness. The thing with trying to get happiness through achievement is this. It's result dependent and completely out of our control. Doesn't it seem stupid to take a chance on our happiness? And even when we do achieve our goals, the gratification that we receive is fleeting. We get a buzz of happiness for a day, a week, or a month if we're lucky. Why? Because as soon as we achieve one thing, we move on to the next thing. The target's always moving. We're always going to be one step away from that happiness that we crave. And you know what? When we put so much emphasis on the end result, we end up not enjoying the process. We start to see the daily work as a means to an end. We become unhappy, self-critical and judgmental in our day-to-day -day work. And ultimately, we fall short of our goals because of this. Holocaust survivor Viktor Frankl wrote in his book Man's Search for Meaning, Don't aim at success. The more you aim at it and make it a target, the more you're going to miss it. For success, like happiness, cannot be pursued. It must ensue. So the key is just to let it happen. Like Mark Manson said, it's all in the subtle art of not giving a f Only then will success and happiness come to us. 
So we must go after our goals, but not get attached to them. We must make the day-to-day -day work the reward in itself, and not a means to an end. We must go about our lives whilst not caring about success and happiness. They will ensue in the long run, precisely because we don't care about them. So the question is, how do we make sure our personal ambition doesn't get in the way of our own happiness? How do we stop chasing happiness so that it doesn't always come around and bite us in the ass? The answer comes in two simple practices. The practice of gratitude and acceptance. For the last six months I've been keeping a journal and what I do every morning is I write two or three things that I'm grateful for each day. I find this is a really simple and easy exercise to do each morning and it literally only takes two minutes. Another gratitude practice which honestly has had the biggest impact on me is through meditation. Only in the last couple of weeks, after eating breakfast each morning, I sit on the sofa and put on a 10 minute long gratitude meditation video from YouTube. This practice can have such a big impact on our happiness because it shifts our perception from always wanting to what we have is enough. It's like shining a positive light on all the good stuff in our lives, whilst keeping the bad stuff in the dark. If we focus on all the good stuff in our lives, we'll attract and find more good stuff because that is what our mind is searching for. Practicing gratitude has the ability to instantly change our mood. And ultimately, when we practice gratitude, we'll be more successful too. Acceptance is the second practice, and it's very closely linked to gratitude. Mark Manson said that accepting a negative experience is actually a positive experience. And the more we can consciously decide to accept things in our life, the frustrating things, like when we're scrolling through our crush's Instagram and we accidentally like that picture from around five years ago, the more we can accept that stuff, the crap in our lives, and the happier we'll be. So make a conscious effort to start accepting the negative experiences in our lives and diminish the never-ending search for positive experiences through the practice of gratitude. I hope we can all learn something from this video. I think it's one of the most important messages that I've learned in a while. And a big reason for me making this video is to try and ingrain it into my mind. If we can keep the message in mind as we move forward on our quest to be happy, we'll stand a lot better chance of finding it. I'm going to link Matt's video down below where I got most of the inspiration for making this video and also a few of the 10 minute gratitude meditations that I've been using over the last few weeks. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.